Here in Canada we have two dominant cultures, the French and the English, and I've mentioned in previous videos that one of the interesting differences between the two cultures is eating habits. An English person is more likely to see food as just something to get into himself or herself um, to stave off hunger, not quite that crudely, but you know, if you see the way that English Canadians eat in restaurants, the meal's over in half an hour, the food is served, they eat the food with some conversation, and that's that. Now French Canadians are perfectly capable of eating like this, if they're pressed for time, or if, you know, it's just a regular meal or something like that, they won't make that big of a deal out of it. But they're also perfectly capable of making a very simple meal last three hours. Um, it would be replete with conversation about the food, about what's going on, about um, uh, considering what your food is going to taste like, this kind of thing. Um, now this kind of is a good illustration of the difference I like to draw between <coughs> hunger and appetite. The English Canadian is slaking his hunger more or less, satisfying a need in his body, whereas the French Canadian is doing that, of course, but is doing it in such a way that there's something else that he wants from it. And <clears throat> we've all heard the French expression, bon appétit. Um, I hope you have a good appetite. There's a difference between hunger and appetite. A hunger is a deficit, and an appetite is a want. It's something that you have the bare minimum, but you want something else out of your food. You want enjoyment, you want to experience it, you want to make an, uh, a ceremony out of the meal or an event out of the meal or something like that. Um, it's not just French people, but I'm just saying in my own country, this is one of the major differences that a lot of people point out between the two cultures. <coughs> Possibly because of the English puritanical background with the simplicity of English food, you're just food is just there, um, and you have to beware of the temptations of taking it all too seriously. It's worldliness. There's something sort of Calvinistic about that in the English mind in Canada. I think it's also there in the United States and Britain as well. <coughs> but in France, um, France has always been traditionally aristocratically, or sorry, agriculturally prosperous, and its aristocrats evolved what is now known as haute cuisine, where, okay, we've got enough food to last for the rest of our lives and then some and now what are we going to do we're just going to fill our bellies for the rest of our lives and die no I want to make sure that I really enjoy my meals and so the French evolved as many other cultures have done and a ceremony to eating um, eating is now an event it's not simply meeting a need um, it's an appetite um, it's something you look forward to doing as opposed to just filling in a deficit in your body. <clears throat> in a deterministic universe, a strictly deterministic universe, I can understand hunger. How do you describe or how do you account for appetite? And appetite goes far beyond food. <clears throat> Why plan ahead for anything? Um, why build the pyramids, why abstract ideas, long-term plans, why have any of that stuff? Um, it, it doesn't seem to be the sort of thing that one could be determined to do, although I suppose other views of determinism say that, well, your options are narrowed to the point where there's only one possible option for you to actually desire. Yes, I understand that, but you still have to desire it in order for it to be a desire beyond simply filling a deficit. Now, you can argue, of course, that this kind of thing doesn't exist, but good luck making that case, that appetite really doesn't exist. It's all, you're just fooling yourself into thinking that a hunger is an appetite. I am not sure that I agree with that. Uh, we wouldn't have to worry about things like gluttony and um, overeating and um, unhealthy food and obesity and all that sort of thing if it was simply a case of filling a void in our bodies. Um, we eat for other reasons, whether we like it or not. We do. Explain things like uh, chocolate bars or um, 
five course meals when you could just pour the whole thing into a big bowl and shovel it down your gizzard or you know whatever there's something more to desire than simply filling in a, in a deficit um, and desire in a determined universe complicates things desire is a function of consciousness um, and I think that that needs to be um, sort of fleshed out a bit um, what desire is. I'm not talking about the feeling of hunger. I'm talking about the feeling of hunger that transmutes into a desire to actually eat. Or perhaps not a feeling of hunger, but I know that next week I'm going out to dinner with a bunch of friends and I'm thinking in advance about how wonderful it'll be to eat with these people and I'm looking for maybe I'm planning a menu for a get-together at my house or something. That would be a very French thing to do, by the way. Um, to sort of make a meal in your home with a lot of friends a really big deal that you carefully plan out the actual ingredients in the meal and everything and you carefully select wines to go along with it desserts that sort of thing um, <clears throat> it, I think it's just too simplistic to say that everything that we want is simply a reaction to something that we don't have because we can, we have the capacity to imagine something far beyond the bare minimum of survival, and we we certainly have the capacity to go after it. How do you possibly explain modern consumer capitalism other than um, wanting things that you most certainly don't need? I'm not saying that this kind of desire is good. By the way, I find consumer capitalism as revolting as anybody else is. Anybody else does. But how do you explain the, the way that desire has developed in Western affluent society? We desire all kinds of things that have absolutely nothing to do with survival or well-being or filling in deficits. As I said in the previous video, maybe necessity comes in and there's a lot of determined stuff. In fact, I would say all of necessity is determined. But desire goes out into necessity. I see what is in front of me and I make note of it. That's determined. That's just the way it is. How do I want things to be now or in the future? I don't think you can account for that in a determined or a purely hard determined universe. 